Yeah, three common mistakes that I see majority of stroke survivors doing and I believe you might be doing one of them too. Don't worry, as always, I'm going to give you very useful tips that you can do to correct each of these mistakes. Welcome to Basically Physio, my name is Suresh and I'm a physiotherapist. So the first mistake I see happening is you're standing up wrongly. So let's take a look at this demonstration I'm going to show you. So for example, this is my stronger side, this is my stronger side and this is my weaker side. What most of the time, majority of stroke survivors do is like this. You will tend to put your stronger leg behind and also reach out with your stronger hand and you're going to push onto something or pull onto something and stand up. So it's going to look something like this. Okay? So if you can notice, this is my stronger leg and this is my weaker leg. What is happening here is that you are using a lot more of your stronger leg to stand up. The reason you're putting it behind them is you may not even be noticing this actually because it is something automatic that your body does to get you to do a different movement like standing up. So most of the time, you would just not even notice that your stronger leg goes a little bit more backwards while your weaker leg comes a bit more forward. And another thing that happens is most of the time, your trunk is not bending forward like this. Okay, So when you're going to stand up, you actually need your trunk to bend forward. That means you need to flex forward. And this is the one that's going to help you to lift up your buttock so that you can actually do the movement a bit more efficiently. So most of the time, these are the two things that happen in a sit to stand and this is why you're not standing up properly. The reason this is bad is because every sit to stand is actually an opportunity to train up your muscles. And sit to stand is actually a very good movement because it trains up a lot of muscles. It's actually a full body workout. So every time you're doing it wrongly, you're actually wasting an opportunity to strengthen up your muscles and you're actually losing the opportunity to strengthen up your muscles faster. So some tips that I have is, first thing, make sure that both your feet are in line. That means not one behind the other or not in front of the other. Both of the feet must be in line. Next thing is I want you to look ahead look forward and look up. Okay, so looking forward and up. That means you're going to look at the ceiling at the front and looking at that, you're just going to bend your trunk forward a little bit more than usual. Okay, so if you're just going like this most of the time, you want to go further in front like this and you will start to notice that your butt is lifting off. And this is actually a good sign. This is actually showing you that you're lifting. That means you're bending your trunk forward enough. Okay, so look forward at the ceiling and bend your trunk forward. If required, use your stronger hand to hold onto a support surface or push down on a support surface and just stand up like this, okay? Also notice that I want you to do this movement slowly. You do not have to do this fast because the moment you do it fast, you're going to lock out your knees and you're also going to waste the opportunity to do this movement properly and strengthen up your muscles in a correct manner. If you find this video useful, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and also maybe signing up to my weekly newsletter, Rehab Recovery. Additionally, if you would like to support me and the work that I do, you can actually have a tip or donation that you can send through by the link below. So the second mistake that I see commonly happening is that you're doing your movements and exercise repetitions too fast in a quick manner. So for example, this is my weak hand. For upper limb exercise such as reaching forward, this is what I usually tend to see. People are moving very fast. You're using your muscles to just go fast. And for example, for your lower limb, if let's say you're doing a stepping exercise, you want this is your weaker leg, so you may be just be doing it very fast, okay? Or even if it's this is your weaker leg and this is a stronger leg, you'll be doing it very fast in your stronger leg either. Okay, so the reason this is not good is because when you're doing movements fast, especially in the early stages or even in the middle stages of your recovery journey, you will likely recruit a lot of wrong muscles and you're going to develop a lot of compensatory habits and bad habits. Okay, so if you do not correct this in the early stages and you don't have a therapist to actually uh, pinpoint and tell you this is a wrong movement, what you're going to notice is that further down the line, your bad habits are going to uh, develop into really strong habits that you are going to rely on to do a lot of movements. And this is the problem because you are not going to be able to realize that some of your muscles are going to come back over time, they will start to recover. And these are the muscles that actually need to use it correctly to do the movement. So when you're doing it fast, you tend to use whatever muscles that are there and also whatever compensatory movements that are there to complete the movement. But the point is not to complete the movement, but to do it in a smooth and a good quality movement. Okay, this is the reason that this is how you actually, your limbs are going to recover. So a few tips that I have for this is, for example, for your upper limb, if you're going to do a reaching exercise, if you find it difficult to do it slowly on your weaker hand, do it on your stronger hand first. Okay, do it slowly on your stronger hand. So for example, this is my stronger hand. Do it slowly on your stronger hand and realize how the movement is like. So really focus on your shoulder, your elbow, and also your wrist and fingers, what is happening on your stronger hand. If you need to, just look at the joints itself and see how much of movement is happening, how much of force you're generating in each of these joints. 
Okay, this is going to be very detailed and you're going to really need to feel these movements because when you're doing it on a stronger hand, this is how you want to train it up to do on your weaker hand or weaker leg also. Another tip that I have is to actually visualize the movement before each repetition. So you have to close your eyes and also do it on your stronger hand and see how it feels like, okay? Same thing, see how it feels like and really feel how it feels like, okay? What are the forces required in each joint and what are the angles of movements that are required? So once you have visualized it on your stronger hand, then go ahead and do it for one repetition on your weaker hand, okay? If you find that it's still difficult for you, this just requires a lot more practice and you really want to do it this mental visualization and also feeling these movements before every single repetitions in the early stages. Don't worry, after a while you will build the habit, the good habits okay, that you're going to be developing and you're going to be able to strengthen up your limbs, your upper limb and your lower limb in a much more better and more efficient manner. And in the long run, you're just going to be able to uh, use your limbs much more uh, safely and efficiently. So the third common mistake that I see is actually locking your knee when you're walking on your weaker leg. So for example, this is what it looks like. Okay, so now you're walking, this is my weaker leg. During the stance phase, this knee is just going to pop backwards like this. Okay, so I'm showing you again. When you're taking a step on your weaker leg, what's going to happen is it's going to pop backwards like this. And this is what I call locking of your knee during walking. So why is knee locking during walking bad? It is because it reinforces bad knee control. So what exactly is knee control? Knee control, you can think of it like the muscles at the front of your knee and at the back of your knee, your hamstrings and your quads. Both of these needs to be contracting together in the stance phase, that means the portion where you're standing on the leg. It has to be, both of it has to co-contract and actually work together instead of just relying on one muscle or your ligaments or the passive joints that is around the knee. This is also important because every step that you take is actually an opportunity for you to strengthen up your quads, your hamstrings as well as your glutes muscles and your hip muscles in general. So there's a very good opportunity to strengthen up your knee, your hip and even your ankle muscles and if you are locking out your knee, you are not using this opportunity to strengthen them. And in the short run, you may be able to walk faster by locking your knee but in the long run, this will actually not serve you in your interest because it is just going to make your leg weaker overall. So some tips I have for this mistake is that I actually did a very thorough video on knee locking. Take a look at this video because I run through all the reasons that you can uh, focus on and correct it and even exercises for you to try out in this video here. So the link is in the top right hand corner of this video, so watch that. But if you're just looking for quick tips for this condition, then one demonstration that I can show you is to actually flex your knee while you're walking. That means every time you're taking a step on your weaker leg, I want you to actually purposely flex the knee, that means bend the knee a little bit more so that it actually forces you to activate your quads, hamstrings and also your glute muscles and this actually helps to uh, reinforce this, uh, disrupt the pattern of uh, locking your knee and reinforce a better knee control when you're walking. Do share with me in the comments below if you are actually doing any of these three mistakes and also try out the solutions that I've given you. If you want to watch more videos on how to strengthen your full body, take a look at these videos here. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.